Welcome to the Council of Women. I'm Debbie Frazier. Right now, we're doing a special series with different gifted ministry leaders each week, while Anne, Trillian, and Teresa, our regular contributors, take a short break to focus on other ministry endeavors. Today, my guest is best-selling author Asherita Chuchu. Welcome, Asherita. I'm so glad you're with us today. Debbie, thank you so much for having me again. It's my joy to be here. And I know uh, many of our staff members, especially uh, Jeff and his family, have enjoyed the cookbook that you did before. So I uh, can't wait to talk to you more today. In addition to writing, Asherita is a wife and the mom of three. <laughs> Her passion is helping women find joy in Jesus through creative and consistent time with God's word. Asherita's most recent project is her Prayers of Rest podcast, including her website, prayersofrest.com. Asherita, the idea for this project came out of a difficult experience you had at the beginning of the coronavirus lockdown. Is that right? Tell us that story. Yeah, yeah that's correct. Um, I'm not typically a very emotional person, and I like to think that I have uh, the capacity to love my family well. But lo and behold, being locked down together for days upon days and weeks with just the news being so grim and the uncertainty of what would lie ahead in, in the weeks and months to come. Um, Debbie, early on in the lockdown, I found myself on the floor of my laundry room just bawling. Um, and, and I don't cry easily. And I remember wondering why, why am I struggling so much? Why is this so hard for me? I don't even know why I'm crying. I just feel like I can't take it anymore. And I know just from interacting with readers and friends that many of us had those breakdown experiences just because of the overwhelm, um, especially early on when we didn't really know what we were dealing with and, and there was no light at the end of the tunnel. And I remember just sitting there with the pile of clothes and <laughs> surrounding me, just like <laughs> mountains of clothes, right? And saying, Lord. And suddenly Lord. it was uh, even more to you at that moment. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and just saying, Lord, would you meet me in this place? Wow. Would you give me rest for my soul? And in your goodness, uh, would you allow for a community to come together, even though we're all isolated? And that's kind of what led to the next step. But um, I just, you know, what a gift a year later to look back and say, God used that hard moment to give birth to something incredible. Did you feel like you're kind of the anchor for the family and maybe not even have all the answers? In some ways, I mean, my husband and I are definitely a team and we work together. And so we were leaning on each other. Um, but I think part of it, like he didn't know what to do with me <laughs> because I was an emotional wreck and I'm not usually that way. And so he was trying to support me, trying to encourage me. Um, looking back now, I can see what I needed in that season was time alone and time with God because we were together from the moment everyone woke up to the moment everyone went to sleep. And even with my husband next to me in bed and I love my people, but I needed time to rest. And so the Lord just kind of gave me this idea um, out of nowhere to call together my people on Instagram and say, does anyone want to get together to pray? Let's every morning just start our days in this, season of uncertainty, resting in God's presence, working our way through scripture. And um, what that, that became, I think, eight, eight weeks, Debbie, wow. of daily prayer, of getting together on Instagram live video, praying with one another for a half hour in my closet, <laughs> surrounded by like work clothes that I was no longer wearing and my husband yes. wasn't wearing because we were both working from home. And just in the raw realness of it, um, finding time to rest in God's presence with about two or three dozen women from around the world. It was, it was a transformative experience from something that was really, really hard to becoming the anchor of our days. Did did some women um, write to you or share with you that they were having similar struggles during the lockdown? Absolutely. And I think that part of the beauty is that um, we felt isolated. I think because of the lockdown, we felt like we were alone. I must be the only one 
who's feeling like this. I must be the only one who's struggling to be kind with my children when I just lose my temper. <laughs> I must be the only one who um, is finding it hard to spend time reading my Bible and praying. And what we found in gathering together for prayer is that, no, you're not the only one. We're all kind of struggling through this together. And there's hope, not just in linking arms and saying, let's pray together. There's hope when we turn to scripture and say, God, you are our refuge. You are our hiding place. In the midst of the storm and uncertainty, we can rest in you. Are most women able to be vulnerable and share their emotion like that and all their struggles? Hmm. I, don't, I don't know that I could speak for most women. Um, I know it's hard for me. <laughs> it, it requires a lot of intentionality to especially in, in the social media age where we all want to put a filter on our photos. We all want to write the best caption. We all kind of want to appear like we have our lives together to say, I'm really struggling right now. Um, and would you pray for me? Would you gather and pray with me? <laughs> um, but, but that's where I found help in reaching out to my online community and saying, hey, is anyone else feeling this way? Like, can we do something together? And I feel like that God brings just such goodness in that place. I think Joseph was the one who said to his brothers, what, what you meant for evil, God used for good. Yeah. And we see him doing that over and over again. How important is it to share our burdens honestly? I think looking in my own life, um, it's important to find one or two trusted friends that you can be completely vulnerable and transparent with. Um, I always strive for honesty um, in all of my relationships, but I might not necessarily be vulnerable with someone I just met. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and so there's a distinction there in having a safe person, having a safe place. Uh, my husband is one of those persons for me where I can tell him anything. Um, I can be completely transparent with him because he's proven himself to be trustworthy. And I have a handful of friends that serve that role for me. So I would say, yes, let's be honest in all of our interactions and let's look for one or two or three people that we can be totally transparent and vulnerable with, that they know us. They can ask us, hey, how, how are you really doing? And that they will sit and listen and walk with us through the hard seasons. Uh, how are you feeling these days? Um, the month, uh, this, this past month was a bit intense, um, after about a year of, you know, the lockdown and figuring out work from home and, um, news starting to get better. Uh, I actually got the COVID virus last month. Um, and so that was just really intense to experience it personally. My husband got sick. Uh, we were all quarantined with the kids for a whole month at home. <laughs> And it was like the lockdown all over again, <laughs> um, except this time our neighbors were able to be out and our friends were all going about doing their, their Easter celebrations and kids were in school and it was just our family isolated because of the virus. Um, and so, you know, even revisiting this topic is so yeah. helpful for me because I'm quick to forget God's goodness. Um, and so I have to keep reminding myself, no, God was faithful a year ago. And he is faithful now, and he will see us even through this season. So, Ashreed, I want you to pray, but I first want to just say to our guests, you know, it's safe to be vulnerable with us. It's safe to give us a call uh, at our care force. It's confidential, and it's safe. And I also want to say um, the scripture, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, Jesus said, come to me all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And I want to ask what that means in a moment, but I also want to share that lockdown for me last year was also um, my dad's passing into heaven. And uh, it was a difficult time for us and I'm going to be vulnerable. <laughs> and I sat down on that floor in um, a bedroom and I had those tears. And um, for many reasons and being um, strong for the family and all of that and all that's been going on since. Uh, so, you know, I resonate with you and did get 
people who could be around me and pray. So if you're watching right now, um, join us in this prayer. Uh, free yourself and find rest in Christ. So Asherita, what does that scripture mean to you? And then will you lead uh, us all in prayer? Absolutely. Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30, Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened. And I think we can all relate to that, that feeling. And it offers me such hope that Jesus doesn't say, you need to have your act together. You need to perfectly comply. You need to behave the right way. And then you can come to me. No, Jesus says, when you are weary, when you are overwhelmed, when you feel like you just can't take it anymore, come to me. And I am the one who will give you rest. My burden is easy. My yoke is light. That's his teaching of, of what it means to follow Jesus is to love God and to love others. And when we come to him, he's the one in his loving presence that he allows us then to walk in his love. So let's pray together. Lord Jesus, you are so good to invite us to come to you. Thank you that you are approachable and you are loving. You are kind and you are gentle and humble. Thank you that on the floor of that laundry room, on the floor of the bedroom, in our moment of weakness and desperation, when we cry out to you, Lord, you hear us and you draw close to us. God, we confess that on our own, we just can't really walk through this life. There are times when we might feel like we have the illusion of power or control, or we might feel like we're getting through life just fine. But it's in those moments of desperation that the truth hits us, that we need you. So God, thank you for your invitation to come to you, to be still and find rest in you. And we entrust to you our burdens. We trust you with the hard parts of our lives. We trust you with those relationships that are weighing us down. And we know that you will be faithful. So we love you, Jesus. And we rest in you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen, amen. Ashrita, you just shared the emotional story of the struggle you faced in the beginning of the lockdown, yet God used that battle you faced to birth something new about rest. I'm looking forward to hearing more about that. Yes. Well, thank you, Debbie. I wanted to take some time together to talk about this theme of rest and maybe bring you alongside what I learned early in the lockdown and, and what my community of online readers learned as well. And that is that the word rest has actually become an acronym that we use to walk through prayer. Um, and so we're going to take those really quickly, just one by one. And by the end of our time together, I hope to equip you with an easy to remember acronym that will guide you to pray in those moments where you feel like you just don't know <laughs> how to take the next step. And so the acronym again is REST, R-E-S-T. The R stands for recite God's goodness. The E is express your neediness. The S is seek God's stillness. And the T is trust his faithfulness. And as I just prayed a few moments ago, I was actually walking through that acronym in my mind, and I hope that you will feel equipped to know how to pray scripture as well. So using this passage of Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 30, uh, that Debbie read for us, let's look through how we could pray the rest acronym using scripture. So the R again is recite God's goodness. And we see this all throughout scripture that God um, again and again tells us to declare his goodness, to remind ourselves of what he has done. We see him telling the Israelites um, to constantly be remembering how he delivered them out of Egypt, how he split the Red Sea for them, how he provided in the wilderness. And we probably have our own stories, right, of how God delivered us, how God provided for us, how God protected us. 
So it's important that we regularly take time to remind ourselves of who God is and of what he has done, not just in our own lives, but also who he revealed himself to be in scripture. So using this idea of reciting God's goodness, let's look at Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30, and see what do we learn about who God is and how can we recite his goodness in this passage. So looking at that verse, um, Jesus says, I am humble, I am lowly, I am gentle in heart. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened. And so this time of reciting God's goodness, we can say, Jesus, thank you that you invite us. Thank you that you want a relationship with us. Thank you that you are not power hungry and you are not authoritarian. You are gentle and humble and lowly. And so you stoop down in my time and, and, and place of need. So these are all things we can learn about Jesus. We recite his goodness, who he is. And then maybe we would take a moment or two to think about when Jesus showed those characteristics in our own lives. For me, it's that moment on the laundry room floor saying, God, I need you and, and sensing his closeness to me in that place. And so it does my heart good, like I said, in this season of coming out of being sick with a virus and another quarantine with my family to remember Jesus was close to me in that time. And he will continue <laughs> to be good toward me just as this passage lays out. So the R of the REST prayer acronym is recite God's goodness. We look at a passage of scripture and we say, what does this teach me? about who God is. And let me declare, let me recite, let me say it out loud to myself that God is good and this is how he's good. So we move on with our REST acronym. And the next letter is E, express your neediness. Now, I don't know about you, but I like to be a self-sufficient person. <laughs> I like to have my list and work my way through it and know that at the end of the day, I've accomplished what I've set out to do. But in my moments of total honesty and self-reflection, I realize I need God. There is so much in my life that I cannot do on my own. And this requires humility and honesty before God to say, God, you are infinite and I am not. <laughs> You are perfect and holy in every way, mm -hmm. and I am not. You are always loving and good, and I am not. And God, I need you. So as we look at this passage again through the lens of the REST prayer acronym, Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. And so I asked myself, what in this passage reveals to me my need for God? And this is really easy for me, right? God, I am weary. I am tired. I did not sleep very well last night. I'm still recovering from this virus. And so physically, I feel this way. But emotionally and spiritually, maybe even relationally or mentally, I am weary and heavy burdened. God, I need you. Jesus, I need your rest. I need to slow down and make time with you. God, I need you. And there is something beautiful that happens in our prayer life when we become honest with God about our need for him, because it opens up space for us to then recognize God is good, but God is also open to hearing our cries and our, our pleas of desperation and need. And when we verbalize those things, we are more likely to see his answer, to hear his response, to watch how he works in our lives. So the R is recite God's goodness. The E is express your neediness. And all of this is, is taken from a passage of scripture. So this is a way that you can pray the Bible. The S is something, honestly, that I have been missing in my prayer life, even though I grew up in a Christian family and I've loved Jesus as long as I can remember. Um, I used to just kind of say my part and then run, run off <laughs> and be like, okay, God, thank you for your help. I'm going to go. I'm going to go do the thing now. And rest 
reminds me the S is seek God's stillness. It reminds me that prayer is a two-way conversation, that I lay my heart out before the Lord, and then I wait for him. Sometimes he answers through scripture. Sometimes he answers through the lyrics of a song. Sometimes he might bring something to mind. And other times it might just be a comfortable silence. In Psalm 46, God says, be still and know that I am God. There are other places throughout scripture that we see that Jesus would withdraw himself to be alone with the Father in solitude. And so this is a time in the middle of our prayer of rest to just seek God's stillness, to quiet our hearts in his loving presence to be still with him and hear if there's anything else he wants to say to us. So the R is recite God's goodness. The E is express your neediness. The S is seek his stillness. And then the T is trust his faithfulness. And this is where I visualize those heavy burdens that I'm carrying and I place them at God's feet. I entrust them to him. And I say, God, you are who you say you are, and you will do what you said you will do. And so if I come to you weary and heavy burdened, and you promise to give me rest, then I trust. I trust your word. I trust that you indeed will give me rest. Throughout scripture, as I'm, I'm praying the Bible and I'm praying through this rest acronym, I see God's promises. And I pause to say, God, I trust you. I trust that you will be faithful. I trust that you will help me in my time of need. I trust that you will give me patience with my children. I trust that you will heal me of this virus. God, I trust you. And that trust is connected to rest because I trust in God, then I can rest and stop worrying and stop striving and stop running around with my endless to-do list and rest in God because I trust in him. And that is the rest prayer acronym. It's a beautiful way that I have learned to pray scripture, to look at different parts of the Bible and, and say, what does this tell me about God? What does it tell me that I need to confess to him? That's the E. In what way does this encourage me to pause and be still in his presence and rest in him? And how does this call me to trust God in this area of my life. I hope that this empowers you and encourages you to pray scripture in your own life and to find rest in God's loving presence. You have shared so much here and I'm busy just writing some of my favorite scriptures because your first one was recite God's goodness. And uh, I, I've got to read Psalm uh, 62, one through two. My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. And I just wrote about this myself this last week. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. You know, we can be filled with anxiety. We can have these things occur in our lives. But when Christ is at the center, the anchor, we, we don't have to be shaken. And then I want to read one more um, and then have you comment, but um, express your neediness. You know, my grace is sufficient for you. Second uh, Corinthians 12, my grace is sufficient for you for power is perfected in weakness. Therefore, I delight in my weakness. You know, I have a lot of weaknesses and I don't know about you, but, um, you know, it's, it, I've gotten to the point where this is an opportunity, Lord, for you to show strength in my weakness. And so those are two things that you reminded me of. I'm going to ask you to pray in a couple minutes. We have four minutes left, but, you know, what do you reflect on those two scriptures? Yeah, as you were reading those, Debbie, it just made me think of um, this theme all throughout scripture. Um, I, I think of a passage in Isaiah where God says, in quietness and rest is your salvation. As you learn to rest in God, it changes everything about our day-to-day -day life. 
Um, I'm working on a collection of these prayers of rest devotionals, 365 of them, one for every day of the calendar year. And I had just asked my pastor to read through the manuscript to kind of comb through it theologically. And one of the highest compliments he could have possibly given me, he said, Asherita, I would read through a section of these prayers of rest devotionals. And I felt at rest. I just felt my anxiety and my burdens lifted as I rested in God's presence. And listen, you don't have to use the R-E-S-T prayer framework, right? There's no like rule about doing it this way. But I do encourage you, however you, however this looks like for you, make time on a regular basis to bring to God your concerns and to find rest in him. Thank, thank you for that. In Psalms 23, seek his stillness. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside those still waters. Mm-hmm. Would you pray for those watching um, as we end this program? Absolutely. Lord God, what a gift you have given us. That in our weakness, you are strong. That in our place of need, you swoop in to deliver us. God, thank you that you don't demand from us uh, to somehow muster up more power or muster up more courage. But God, you call us to acknowledge our need for you. You promise that you will be close to those who are broken and contrite in spirit. You, God, are our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. You are the one that we can run to and rest in. God, I pray for those who are watching right now. You know every person, every name. You see and you care. So God, I pray that in a very special way, you would just embrace them with your loving presence. May they seek and find the rest that their soul craves, that is found in you, God, alone. We love you, and we are so, so grateful for you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us, Ashrita. Appreciate your time today. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Go to TLN to find out about new programming and to sign up for a newsletter, and call us for prayer. If you get a voicemail, we will always call you back. Those of us involved with the Council of Women broadcast encourage you to be the whole woman God intended for you. He loves you just as you are. Imagine, though, taking the risk to be the woman he intended you to be. Find rest in him. Thanks for joining us. See you again next week.